Baghdad. This is not a this is not a polo. You know, dispute. If you go into a, a Syria and you topple the Assad government, the ISIS-affiliated forces are okay. right now stronger on okay, the ground. Okay, let me, let me throw this at you. Syria, are we going to let this continue? This is my conundrum here. Right. I agree with you all this stuff. You know yeah. your stuff. We're going to just let them keep executing people, pouring gasoline. When they get somebody a nun over there and start gasoline her, what point are we going to say, we're going to blow that place up with anything we got even if we don't win? Yeah, well, when I, do you just you know, explode as a country and say, we're not going to take that anymore? When's that going to happen? Well, well, the, the, the problem, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is that uh, nothing makes Obama explode. Uh, nothing that we've seen so far. Uh, of course, Israeli construction workers make him explode, but that's about it. Jed Babin, contributing editor for the American Spectator and former deputy undersecretary of defense for George H.W. Bush, joins us. Uh, hello, sir. Hey, Steve. How are you? Good. Good to talk to you again. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, what uh, the president's uh, request. Uh, and also, I want to touch on what we're finding out about uh, 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 Kayla Mueller, the uh, hostage, the American hostage who was uh, just confirmed killed. Uh, we, we're now learning, I mean, just ho horrible cir circumstances that she converted to Islam. Uh, she was given to a, a, an ISIS fighter and was married off to him. And I mean, you know, and again, and nothing Nothing irks this president. He called them an organization when discussing her death uh, yesterday, the way he called them an organization when he commented on the Jordanian uh, pilot's death. Well, I don't know how to even begin with this. Uh, this is a president who has an Islam-centric uh, foreign policy. Uh, his national security strategy requires a willing suspension of disbelief to even accept. Uh, you have a situation with ISIS where they are randomly killing Americans as quickly as they can. Uh, nothing seems to get this guy to explode except the idea of uh, Bibi Netanyahu coming here to give a speech. So there is nothing really that he is interested in in foreign policy. There's nothing really he's going to do in foreign policy. And now we see, well, this uh, new request, I haven't read it yet, I don't think it's public, uh, for an authorization of use of military force against ISIS. Uh, and he still is not willing to do much. Uh, and there's a possibility of putting boots on the ground only insofar as rescuing pilots or taking some uh, special forces in to try to do away with the ISIS leaders. Uh, that's maybe a start. But, you know, there's a lot of things we could do. Maybe there's some things we should do. I keep coming back to the point that it's the Arab nation's fight. You know, well, Saudi Arabia should be joining with Egypt, should be joining with the Jordanians, and they are the only ones fighting right now. Uh, and they should be defeating ISIS. There is really not much of a role there at all for us. And are we making a mistake, Jed, uh, concentrating on ISIS when the scourge of Islamic terror, uh, you know, knows no bounds, and uh, and the the number of groups uh, which we could rattle off some and some I, I, I'm sure I don't even know. You might, uh, you know, it's a scourge all over the world, and it's it's a lot more than just ISIS. Well, of course it is. And, you know, it all comes back to Iran and the other na nations that sponsor terrorism, including Saudi Arabia. Don't forget, they are still a principal sponsor, a principal funding source for uh, Al Qaeda. So are we going to step up to this? No, uh, we haven't since 2001. And this president is certainly not going to do that. He does not see that there's much of a problem there. So you're going to have more people die. You're going to have more nations come under threat. And in the meantime, we're apparently talking to Iran in terms of giving them hegemony over the Middle East. So this is what you're going to get for the next couple of years and until we get a better president, which may be longer than that. Yeah, you know, as as they throw, they toppled the Yemeni government, as the uh, the the, the uh, Iranian backed uh, soldiers who did that uh, now take uh, vehicles and weapons from our Marines <laughs> again. So, and, and you wrote a great piece at the Washington Times. It should be pointed out. Obama's fabulous the national security strategy, um, the fabulous. I'm sorry. Um, and, and and the fact of the matter is that even as Iran does what I just said and much more, it doesn't stop him from embracing Iran. No, it doesn't. And again, this is what we've got from this man. He is not really interested in supporting the Western interests there. He's not interested in supporting our national security interests or our allies. And this is going to be a major threat to the world. Don't forget, we've heard for years now, years and years and years, that Iran was very close to achie achieving nuclear weapons. And they're even closer now. Now we're going to end up with a treaty with Iran that's not going to have any meaningful verification of it. 
So what they're going to do, they're going to do in secret, and then one day they're just going to say, oh, by the way, guys, we've got nuclear weapons, and you're all kind of going to be our slaves from now on. So that's what we're being set up for, and this is really the important point, Steve. This is why this agreement, whatever he comes up with with Iran, has to be submitted to the Senate for ratification or rejection, because this is something that is an overwhelming import to the United States national security interests. This president does not have the authority to make that agreement in absence of Senate ratification. But, of course, he claims that there's a way around it. He will find what he believes to be a way around it, or at least will claim is a way around it. And I got to tell you, it's the Congress's duty, if they believe the President of the United States is breaking the law, trampling on the Constitution, they have remedies. And one of them starts with I. And I know that's a dirty word for some reason, but it's their duty, not their option. And if they just, you know, maybe they'll sue him to try to stop an agreement, and maybe in five years they'll get to court with that. But that's not the answer. It's, it's ridiculous. The suits are probably going to be thrown out of court. The ones that are going to be there are going to be only heard after he's out of office. And it's not an effective remedy. Look, the United States courts, and I wrote this on 9-11. It was published in the Washington Times on 9-12-01. I said then, I say now, the courts are not instruments of national security. The Senate has a duty not to, you know, forget the I word for the moment, the impeachment issue, that's another issue. But the real issue is the R word, ratification. If he does not- No, I agree. Ratification, he has to, they have to take it upon themselves to get a hold of that agreement right. and to either vote Absolutely. it up Absolutely. Jed, Jed, uh, thank you very much. Jed Babin, ladies and gentlemen, I uh, always appreciate it. And we're coming back, ladies and gentlemen, uh, with- our viewer calls. And if you want to be a part of that, here's the number 561 369 0081. 561 369 0081.